Hi, welcome to my talk. My name is Isao Tanaka from Kyoto University, Japan. Today I'm going to talk about recommender system for material discovery. Let me start. Material scientists in inorganic chemistry domain are always keen to discover new compounds. They may trigger realization of excellent properties. This is an analysis of inorganic crystal structure database ICSD. The number of newly discovered compound is plotted against the number uh, the year of discovery. For the ternary ionic compounds, almost 8,300 compounds have so far been discovered. Among them, 40% of them are oxide. It seems that the discovery rate is almost saturated or decreasing somehow. There can be a several uh, reasons for the trend. But it seemed that easily synthesizable compound and or compounds in focused chemistry domains have already been discovered. Then the question arises, can we continue or accelerate discovery of new compounds? This is a comparison of ternary and quaternary ionic compounds. As compared to ternary, uh, the discovery rate of the quaternary compound is still decreasing, uh, still increasing. At the same time, most of them are oxide. This suggests that there are good chances for the discovery of quaternary or more complicated uh, systems. In order to explore the huge chemistry space, however, we need to have an efficient method for the discovery. For that purpose, we have adopted recommender system. The first part of my talk is uh, for uh, this, with this title, Recommender System for the Discovery of CRC, Chemically Relevant Composition. This was done by uh, those, my younger colleagues, together with information scientists. So let me explain what is Recommender System. Recommender System is uh, probably very familiar with you because you always encounter recommender system when you buy something on e-commerce. Like if you buy Amazon.com, something from the Amazon.com, then they always recommend you to buy something afterwards. It's the same for Netflix Con, which is sometimes useful, not always, of course. The algorithm behind those recommender system is very simple. They have a really huge millions or billions of list of customers. And uh, they know who bought which items. This matrix is called rating matrix. They just rearrange those elements in this way and based on the assumption that a person with a similar tendency of purchase or similar flavor will buy the similar product. Based on that assumption, in mathematical language, it is called a low rank structure of rating matrix. Based on that assumption, the uh, recommender system will recommend this customer A to buy this item three, and to customer H to buy this item two. We use this uh, algorithm uh, for discovery of new chemically relevant composition. 
So let me explain what is chemical relevant composition. If you look at, for example, a database like ICST, for pseudo binary system, you can find uh, this type of compound registered in ICSD. From the theoretical viewpoint, uh, this compound may be located on the convex hull of the formation energy. They can be called chemically relevant composition. For the other composition, which are not located on the convex hull, then they may be not CRC. This is a very simple definition of chemically relevant composition. In order to search the candidate of the CRC, we took a huge a chemistry space for ternary, quaternary, and quinary with a quite simple composition ratio up to 8 or 20. Then the number of candidate uh, composition becomes 23 billion in this case for the quinary system. This is a huge number. Out of cations uh, in the 66 different element, and also 10 anions. Among those 23 billion, our knowledge in database is very, very limited. This is the number of entry compound in the three databases, and you can find that uh, it is only. Uh, less than 10,000. If you compare it with the candidate uh, compound, there's a huge gap between these two uh, number of compounds. But this is what we can achieve. So we use these data as a training set of our recommendation system. And these two other databases are used for the test data after avoiding uh, this overlap. So there is no overlap between training and test set. So this is the number of test set. For the matrix factorization, there are several technique algorithms available. And we have tested this non-negative matrix factorization, NMF, and singular value decomposition, SVD, both are available in the scikit-learn. In order to use matrix representation, we have to express the, this type of compound into the matrix representation. There are many different ways for matrix representation like type A, just to take one uh, first cation in the first category, and the uh, rest of the information in the second category, or type 2 and type 3. In the case of type 1, here is the number of uh, element is only 66, but here the number of element becomes uh, 110,000. So this is a huge matrix before the matrix factorization. This is a result uh, after NMF or SVD matrix factorization. The, this uh, horizontal axis corresponds to the length of the matrix, and the vertical axis corresponds to the successful rate. This is counted as the number of correct answers included in test set data. This orange bars correspond to top 100 compositions with high predicted rating. The uh, first three, SBD performs better than NMF. And the dependence on the length seems to be quite weak. Lastly, this SVD type 2 performs best among these six uh, different types.
type of examination. For this top 100 compositions, the number of uh, this successful result, number of compound included in the test set was something like 45%. It means the discovery rate is more than 45% by this way. Even for the top 3,000 compositions, the discovery rate was more than 21%. So please keep in mind this 45% number. We took tensor representation after we finished metric representation because uh, uh, for the more complicated system, tensor representation works much better. This is the way for the tensor representation of compound for binary compound. The third order tensor uh, is used for the binary compound. Here is a cation, here is anion, and here is an integer set correspond to the chemical composition. So for example, TR3O4 is located here because titanium here, oxygen is here, and here is the composition ratio. So the number of elements in this uh, pseudo-order tensor was already 110,000. <coughs> For the tensor factorization, we have adapted CP decomposition and uh, Taka decomposition technique. And I will show that this Taka decomposition uh, performed the best. By the way, both of the techniques are available in a psychic tensor. This is the result for two techniques, uh, the function of length. Again, uh, there is quite weak dependence or almost no dependence on the length. This is the result for the ternary uh, compound. The uh, the Taka decomposition, Taka decomposition uh, works much better than CP decomposition. And the uh, Taka decomposition works better than the best matrix factorization. So let me look at this Taka result for the Taka decomposition. For the top 100 composition here, the discovery rate was 59%. This is much better than uh, the matrix factorization. And uh, I want to emphasize that this 55% discovery rate is really astonishing because what we did was just the rearrangement of the element. No descriptors, no prior knowledge, no first principles calculation, nothing used, just a rearrangement of the elements. Then we were able to find out 59% of yet unknown or yet unregistered compound. It is the same for the top 3,000 compositions. The, the superiority of the Taka decomposition can be found up to 20,000 uh, something. The, if we compare ternary, quaternary, and quinary, the success rate of top 100 compound is still quite good for quaternary, but uh, about one-fourth in the quinary system. We know the reason, because the number of entry compound, as I have shown, is much smaller for the quinary system. That's the reason of the uh, smaller uh, success rate. But uh, remember that for the quinary system, the number of uh, candidate compound is 23 billion. And to enter into this 23 billion word without a map, it is almost impossible. 
even the 15 percent of the prior knowledge should be quite useful. Okay. So um, uh, for further validation of uh, the this uh, CRC were made by the first principles calculation because for us first principle calculation is a kind of routine. So uh, we took an example of this uh, pseudo binary system, and uh, these two compounds showed quite high rating by our recommendation system. So we made a series of uh, first principles calculation, and uh, this correspond to uh, each dot correspond to each uh, first principles calculation. And the structure was taken from the ICSD prototype structure. As you can see, here is a convex hull, and both of these compounds are located on the convex hull. So by theoretical calculation, it is it they were confirmed to be thermodynamically stable. Similar validation by DFT calculation were done for all 27 pseudo-binary compounds, and uh, we found that 23 among 27 percent are uh, 27 compositions. It is 85 percent of the uh, all pseudo-binary system are thermodynamically stable by DFT. So here is a short summary of the first part. Uh, we have succeeded to make systematic discovery of as yet unknown CRC using a tensor based recommender system only with inorganic crystal database ICSD. Neither descriptors nor DFT results were used, but the success rate, discovery rate was found to be quite high or top 100 or top 3000. The result was further confirmed or validated by systematic DFT calculations. So we are more or less happy with our result, but still this is a pie in the sky. We are quite often criticized that experimenters Tourists are not interested in those kind of pine sky. It means we are responsible. We means material scientists are responsible to actually show the predicted compounds. But synthesis recipe of as yet unknown compounds is not given in a cooking book. So we need to consult an expert if he or she is available, or an artificial intelligence AI for successful processing conditions. This is the motivation of the second part of my talk, successful experimental conditions of new compound based on parallel experiment data set and recommend the system. This was done mainly by uh, Professor Hayashi in our group. In the lab, not only we are doing uh, theoretical calculation, but also we are doing uh, experiment. And uh, we built up this type of parallel synthesis experimental equipment to prepare precursor powder systematically and firing and crystal phase identification in a parallel manner using this type of automatic sample exchanger for X-ray diffraction in order to construct database of our own. For uh, the, our first trial, our target chemistry competition space was not so big, but uh, it is a ternary oxide with two cation elements out of nine. So target chemical composition is 828, 
among these uh, 828, 67 are uh, known to be present in uh, ICSD. And uh, in ICDD, 178 compounds are registered. So the fir our first trial was uh, uh, using this ICSD data, uh, performing experiment, and used as a training set in order to predict the uh, synthesizability of those compounds in a test set. Okay, for the data set, we have chosen four different synthesis methods, solid state reactions, OGL, polymonides, complex, break up precipitation, etc. And the 23 starting materials, and the 23 cation mixing ratios, and five different firing temperatures. And after uh, powder X-ray diffraction uh, by different processing technique and different firing temperatures, we found those X-ray diffraction data and the rated the result uh, to be 2 if the, uh, the target compound can be found as an output. If it is not found, uh, the rating was 1. But you can provide whatever rating as you like, 1 or 0 or uh, 5, 0 or whatever, 100, 0, whatever. And put all the data into this type of tensor representation. Actually, we used fifth order tensor, but uh, this is just third order tensor. But uh, uh, the result is shown here. The orange, provide, orange element provides successful result. The blue element corresponds to unsuccessful result, and white means unexperimented result. This is the original tensor, and uh, supply that to tensor decomposition, and the reconstruct tensor to find out promising candidate. So let me show a result. This is a fifth order tensor with 243 uh, thousands element input data are 1,600. This is a cross section of the tensor, original tensor. You can find the successful as orange, unsuccessful as blue, and white area correspond to unexperimented conditions. You can find a huge space in as an unexperimented condition. But after Taka decomposition and reconstructing uh, tensors, you can find out scores in unexperimented PERT. This can provide prediction of the successful or unsuccessful processing conditions. The, we validated uh, the result by doing further experiment. The, these uh, compound compositions are uh, taken from ICDD a database, but they are not registered in ICDD database. So it means they are not used in a training set. The, they are ranked according to the standardized predicted score. As you can see, those highly scored compound provide this successful synthesis in this study. The, when the, the score is high, we found that the result is quite successful. If the score is intermediate, then uh, the successful rate is intermediate. If the uh, result is, uh, score is quite poor, then it is unsuccessful. In this way, it was possible to make rational selection of processing conditions. Okay, for this uh, experimental processing condition, it seems this type of recommender system and the parallel experiment works quite nicely, and we are going toward that direction. 
Okay, this is the use of the, our recommender system for the material discovery. Thank you for your attention.